What's up all my H and peeps? This is your boy Tywan Hubbard and we're here to do a research update video for you guys. Uh, this video today is going to cover a case study. Uh, so first of all, um, a case study doesn't have the same weight or credibility as larger scale studies, but the findings of this study was so remarkable that I wanted to share it and do a research update uh, on it uh, so that I can uh, bring it to the world um, because I think it's just outstanding uh, the findings of this study. So um, other than that, I just want to go ahead and dive right in and let's go ahead and do it. All right. So the title of this study is Hydrogen Inhalation Promotes Recovery of a Patient in Persistent Vegetative State from Intracerebral Hemorrhage, a Case Study Report and Literature Review. Um, so basically, the basic um, outline of this case study report is that 11-year-old boy had a intracerebral hemorrhage um, that led to him basically um, having to have surgery uh, to save his life. And um, following that surgery, he entered into a persistent vegetative state. Um, this type of hemorrhage, um, hemorrhage, by the way, just has a super high mortality. Um, so uh, it's amazing that they were even able to save him um, based on the type of injury uh, that he actually had. So uh, I want to go ahead and cover some basic facts from the study, and then we're going to go ahead and walk right through it and show you some of these really amazing findings that they actually saw with hydrogen in inhalation. So uh, first things first, um, as I stated already, uh, this boy had a intracerebral hemorrhage, uh, which led to them having to perform surgery on him. After that, uh, he was actually... Um, entered into a persistent vegetative state. And for basically two months, he showed no improvement, even with multiple different types of re re rehabilitation therapies. So from hyperbaric oxygen to, um, to nerve growth factors, to comprehensive bedside rehabilitation therapies, he showed no improvement. And this led to them um, discussing with the parents about doing hydrogen inhalation. So that's basically um, the outline of the study. Let's go ahead and dive in and get into some of these uh, cool little quotes and facts. All right, so uh, following uh, this boy having surgery and entering into a persistent vegetative state, uh, it says here that uh, approximately six weeks or 41 days after the surgery, the patient was still in a completely bedridden vegetative state. Um, and they use a coma recovery scale to try to gauge um, how responsive uh, the boy was. And uh, the scale score goes up to three. And so basically, this is what they saw after six weeks. Um, his audio function was at zero. His visual function was at zero. His motor function was at one. His verbal function was at zero. His communication function was at zero. And his arousal was at two. Um, and so... Um, basically, he relies completely on life support um, and a nasal feeding tube, uh, but the patient did have a normal heartbeat. And so um, that was after six weeks after the surgery. That's where he was. Uh, and so they said, basically, um, the patient showed no signs of improvement after four weeks uh, and after the surgery. And so they um, basically transferred him to a rehabilitation department. Um, where he can start to undergo rehabilitation treatments and training. Um, but they did that for four weeks. For four weeks, they did rehabilitation therapies um, to try to have an intervention for his persistent vegetative state. And what they found is after an additional four more weeks, um, he showed no signs of improvement and he was still in a severe persistent vegetative state. Uh, and so um, this is something that these are some uh, of uh, some of the information of, about how or what his persistent vegetative state looked like. They said that the patient occasionally opened his eyes and yawned, but he had no response to pain stimulus uh, and could not distinguish between his family members and strangers. He was unable to listen and follow instructions or speak. Um, it said the patient had no voluntary movements or control uh, and could not keep his head steady, sit down, stand up, or walk. 
um, but he did have normal reflexes on the reflex test. So um, he was in a very desperate spot uh, based on based on what we see right here in the study. And basically two months after two months after surgery, he was still in a very uh, desperate spot. Uh, so let's go on and see what they say about hydrogen therapy. OK, so after the rehabilitation therapies, having really no success and considering the boy's prospects of getting better, um, the doctors uh, talk to uh, the family about hydrogen inhalation. And this is what it says. It says after after a thorough discussion and explanation of the patient's status with his family and with their permission, high concentration hydrogen inhalation therapy was was administered. Uh, the treatment was given twice a day for two to three hours each time for five months. Um, and the initial H2 inhalation treatment started two months after the patient developed persistent vegetative state. And so this high concentration of hydrogen um, inhalation uh, was in the form of oxyhydrogen. So it was 66% H2, 33% O2. So that was a gas mixture that they actually uh, was administering to uh, the boy. And this is what they started to find. Uh, they said that hydrogen inhalation um, said that it stabilized the brain hemorrhage and the edema um, compared to the other treatments that they were doing. Uh, and they said due to the significant improvement of the condition of the patient, um, the nasal gastric tube was withdrawn and he was switched from tube feeding to oral liquid diet one month after treatment. So basically, within the first month, hydrogen inhalation started to stabilize the brain hemorrhage and started to reduce uh, or stabilize the edema in the brain. Now, after two months of hydrogen inhalation, this was the type of recovery um, this boy was having. It says that uh, he was able to follow simple instructions he was able to open his mouth and chew simple foods. He was able to voluntarily um, bend and straighten um, his left lower limbs. Uh, it says that uh, he was steadily improving with longer hydrogen inhalation sessions. He uh, says after 90 days of the initial treatment of hydrogen, um, his motor functions improved significantly. He was able to reproduce uh, movements following instructions. Um, and then he says uh, he was able to produce facial expressions vastly um, better, more or, or better um, compared to um, before hydrogen inhalation. Uh, and then he was able to communicate and speak words um, in like very small phrases. Yeah. So that's what. Yeah. So that's what it says. Basically, uh, what uh, his recovery looked like on hydrogen inhalation after two months. And so. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and turn over to the next page and let's see what else it says in the following months. So uh, it says here uh, at five months. So this is at five months. Um, it says that after five months of hydrogen inhalation, uh, that the patient rec had recovered near normal state of consciousness. So I don't even know how to wrap my head around that. Uh, considering what kind of hemorrhage this little boy had, that he um, had a almost a near normal state of consciousness. And so on the, uh, on the coma recovery scale the score, he went from his first score um, being a three. So basically, um, that's basically all he had was a three. Uh, and that was because he scored a two on arousal and like a one in motor function. So they said after five months of hydrogen inhalation, this boy scored a 22. And so here's what his score was. His audio function was at a four. His visual function was at a five. His uh, motor function was at a five. His verbal function was at a three. His communication function was at a two. And his arousal was at a three, along with improvement of speech ability. Uh, that's what it looks like at five months after hydrogen inhalation. Um, they actually continued to show, and he's actually continued to show improvements at six and seven months. So it says here at six and seven months, the patient could understand simple instructions, identify items and read numbers. He could make requests 
with simple hand gestures. Um, he's steady at holding his head straight, independently turning his body over to the right side, uh, lifting uh, his hands up and reaching his head, um, touch his eyes and nose with his hands, and make voluntary movements of his lower limbs or his lower left limb. They do go through a review of how they believe Hydrogen was able to exhibit these effects uh, within this disease model based on the scientific literature. And um, there's a whole host of beneficial things that Hydrogen does in the brain, but primarily they believe it's, it's primarily attributed to Hydrogen's ability to reduce oxidative stress um, and to regulate inflammation. And, and so um, it's far more in depth in that section. And so I won't cover everything in there, um, if you want to know how hydrogen can benefit the brain, you should go check out our brain series. Uh, we actually have, I think, four videos that we cover on how hydrogen um, can benefit the brain and many of the things that they're mentioning um, within uh, this part of uh, the study uh, is actually already in our brain series. So you can go watch that and binge that and be able to see how hydrogen really can benefit the brain. So um, in conclusion, uh, it said that, uh, let me see, in conclusion, uh, it said that uh, the patient finally recovered to near normal conscious state um, and was able to score a 22 from his previous three. So basically, uh, the boy continued to get better and um, looked like uh, was progressing all the way to a normal, normal functioning state again. Um, before he had this uh, hemorrhage and was in a persistent vegetative state uh, for more than two months after, um, for more than two months before they tried hydrogen therapy. It did mention this, which I think is very important um, considering um, the findings of this study. Uh, you know, it could just be ran with and be like, oh my goodness, hydrogen. Um, basically, you could give a person hydrogen on a persistent vegetative state and they're going to just be able to come back to a normal state, basically come back to life. Um, and so uh, it did mention this in the study and I want to focus in on it because um, I don't think it takes away from the study, but it is important. And so I'm just gonna quote it for you guys. And so here's the quote. It's worth noting that not all persistent vegetative patients were responsive to molecular hydrogen in our clinical research. We tried high concentration HU inhalation in patients with acute necrosing encephalopathy but there was no significant therapeutic effect regarding the recovery of consciousness in some patients after several weeks of high concentration H2 inhalation. Considering that the pathophysiological mechanism of neural injury and recovery of consciousness in brain diseases are complicated, the effectiveness of H2 gas treatment might be dependent on the severity of brain damage and the multiple underlying mechanisms of molecular hydrogen. Therefore, it may or may not be effective for all inflammation or oxidative-based diseases. Okay, so I think this is a very important point, um, and this is why we need more research and we need more studies. Um, in this section of the article, it basically states that hydrogen was able to improve um, some people in a persistent vegetative state and others that it did not. Um, and that we need to understand far more uh, information around how hydrogen actually works so that we know how to best use it. Uh, and so this is why research is very important. This is why um, make sure you're getting a daily, uh, the suggested dose of hydrogen um, is important. And we're going to have to find out what doses are appropriate for different disease models. And that um, that's going to be difficult and it's going to be a lengthy process. Uh, you know, maybe high concentration hydrogen inhalation is going to be suitable um, for uh, some disease model models um, at a 66% hydrogen concentration. But maybe some disease models might need an 80% hydrogen concentration because it's going to result in a certain amount of hydrogen in the in the in the blood and and in cells uh, to induce a therapeutic effect that's going to be appropriate for that forever with that particular disease model. So. I think this is just really important um, that they're trying to provide some context here in their clinical research of using hydrogen with persistent vegetative state patients, that hydrogen has exhibited remarkable effects in some and others that it wasn't, they didn't see all that much of a therapeutic effect and that we still have a lot of questions to be answered with hydrogen 
um, therapy when it comes to how hydrogen is doing what it's doing in there and the best ways to use it. Um, and so this is something I've seen in a lot of different research, especially in the ones of the studies that show hydrogen to be ineffective. Um, some of them just use very low doses. And so maybe the dose wasn't there. And so, or maybe um, they use a particular type of administration method, maybe hydrogen inhalation, but maybe hydrogen water would have worked better. So we just need to be able to go through um, this research and be able to accept where hydrogen is today and be able to use it um, the best we can based on the data that we actually have. So I wanted to go ahead and make a mention of that and go ahead and give that message out there because I think it's important. All right, so this is your research update video from HG Minutes this month. I uh, really uh, appreciate you guys um, watching watching this stuff, um, liking, liking our channel and subscribing. Please share this video with others uh, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Deuces.